henceforth meta awareness. So, humanity, as we call it, has only just recently been transitioning into the next phase of the evolution of consciousness and is now beginning to become acquainted with meta awareness a process that will unfold slowly and steadily, as such developments always start out small and escalate with existential utilization. One small rolling stone can create a giant landslide. As with most things in illusion, inceptions can often be imperceptible, with subsequent developing changes occurring very gradually thereafter. So meta-awareness has an upgraded operating system of sentience in the context of this current dream story landscape, which we like to think of as some kind of external localized planetary solar system event, is a fairly new consideration for the experiential agency. In looking back upon the so-called history of the evolution of consciousness in this realm, we can see that we have already gone through two discernible phases in this development thus far. The phases of instinctual consciousness and then self-consciousness in the evolution of consciousness. Whoa, Sage, before you go any further, I gotta object to the way you are using the word evolution here. Evolution of consciousness, you say? Everyone knows that it's physicality that undergoes the evolution, and that consciousness, or the mind of the material creature, is just a byproduct of this physiological process. An understandable objection from a disconnected externalist who so desperately wants sensory illusions to be the source of its agency, so that it doesn't have to assume any responsibility for reality. I can appreciate your hang-up, but I really think your effort to attempt to overcome this preoccupation is long overdue. Please try to wake up and break your obsessive fixation with the false description of reality, as defined as an objective medium independent of mind. At the risk of sounding cliché, I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway, you are stuck in Plato's cave mesmerized by shadows on the cave wall. Point blank. The idea that objective aspects of physicality are the primary stimulus to evolutionary development, whether that be selection, mutation, migration, or random drift, is an externalization. For it overlooks and bypasses the primary agency that gives context to such things as selection, mutation, migration, or random drift. Overlooking the primary agency is the crucial error, always. Hence, since the theory of evolution gets the basic premise wrong, it therefore has the underlying explanation of the process also wrong. Objective non-sentient materials, or chemicals, or however it is that you want to classify these illusory aspects, that supposedly randomly combine to compose forms that then materialize life essence, of which is the only factor in all this that would constitute the criteria for a manifested life form, that which distinguishes turtle from a rock, do not produce the life essence. See, this is why science is so far behind where it could be. This is why there are gaps and misconceptions in our understanding of evolution. And also why science is seemingly stymied and reached its max capacity within the old physical model. 
quantum physics has certainly opened the doorway to many new staggering possibilities. But even these fertile grounds won't produce any worthwhile fruit if they are continually approached with the same old externalization mindset. This is the tendency to deal with sensory information assuming the imagined premise of objectivity, taken on with faith, which asserts that some kind of naturalistic outside factor produced all appearances in our perceptions that we call materials, while casting our own agency, the only sure thing, in the center from which any and all ideas of existence find their context, as a mere minor inconsequential byproduct of whatever it is that is responsible for its origins. This stubborn insistence on clinging to a false hypothesis is what prevents many giant steps forward in our scientific aspirations. There won't be any time travel, teleportation, advanced space travel, or the unraveling and harnessing of secrets to electromagnetism if we remain anchored to an incorrect premise and an outdated scientific model. If you can't recognize the proper configuration, that identity and reality have their true origins in a meta-mental context of which the workings of the physical are but a functional tool representing only the most gross, densest aspect of reality you won't get very far as a scientist. Now this doesn't mean that I'm saying physicality is completely irrelevant. But only that physicality is more of a primitive byproduct of an agency that is predominantly ethereal. As I've referred to this in the past, physicality, the denser mental state, this is a truth that unveils a universe that doesn't have an actual external location in time and dimensional space. Sound crazy? Well, an objectively existing universe is an idea that more begs the question, which do you think is more cost effective and has less overhead? Constructing an actual entire universe or merely provide the illusory experience of one. It's a no-brainer. The universe is a mental construct. Total awareness imagines this context, which eventually gives rise to the basic seeds of consciousness, which can come together spontaneously within a spark of imagination. The imagination can do this because it derives its potent abilities from pure potentiality, which has no laws or rules to govern it. These basic principles, which are not an endorsement of an intelligent design by a supreme being, by the way, but are rather the result of a great impersonal scientific natural force, which I often like to refer to as pure potentiality, are even upheld and represented in the theory of the Big Bang itself, the prevailing cosmological model for the universe, which implies that an expanding universe can be traced back in time to an originating single point. Before this single point, we have to concede nothingness, the static unified field, the superposition, pure potentiality that has no qualitative state, yet produces all possible states of quality. The single point manifests outwards from within, a process that mimics on a seemingly large scale the fundamental truth of an awareness-based inner source. If all of reality came from a single point from within and everything that's expanding outwards from this center was at one time whole and unified, wherein can any external origin be? It's not even logically possible. If you subscribe to Big Bang, the origins of existence come from an internal source, 
not an external one. Your physical form is the outward expression of an internal source. So if there is anything external going on out here, relative to this inner source, it's the manifestation of all physics, which are of a metaphysical origin. So understand, you are in a realm of imagination, not in an actual solid fixed location called a universe. When you can finally appreciate this through Satori, or via your own first-hand insights into the fundamental nature of reality, you will then come to realize that when it comes to the development of form within illusion, the only aspect that evolves is consciousness, and everything else follows suit. Now you know what the driving force behind what's called evolution really is. Consciousness, which has its roots in total awareness. This is the driving force that inspires selection, mutation, migration, and random drift. This is the driving force that brings about the circumstances that allow for gene splicing and interspecies sex. This is the driving force that, in response to the many different experiences, trials, and tribulations of consciousness, inspires awareness to imagine and conjure up new innovations of existential embodiment into being from nothing. Now I know you feel automatically inclined to reject this, because it defies the conventions of your logic, reason, and common sense. But this is only because you have accepted a false premise as a default, and therefore have no idea how pure potentiality operates. Yes, pure potential can literally pop things into existence from thin air. Something can come from nothing. No, that can't be. Then what, pray tell, is your theory of the Big Bang? Is something from nothing, not the main underlying principle and subsequent conduit of manifestation to the materialization of the entire universe? So now that we've cleared that up, coming back around to the main point, from which we sidetrack down a tangential alleyway, we come back to meta-awareness. Looking at the history of sentience, we can see that consciousness has already gone through two major stages of progression in its evolutionary trajectory, instinct consciousness and then self-consciousness. Instinct consciousness is an operating system that involves innate behaviors performed without being based upon prior experiences and the succeeding modifications of these behaviors and the possibility of adapting new behaviors based on very rudimentary learning experiences interacting with stimuli and other patterns in nature. And then self-consciousness, which is a considerably more complex operating system involving advanced processes of varying cognitive applications and the development of self-recognition. This distinction of consciousness is generally the dividing line used to distinguish animals from humans. And self-consciousness has been the primary operating system for humans ever since the emergence of the humans, and remains so till this very day. Until now. Enter meta-awareness. Meta-awareness is when the source of attention moves beyond the confines of a self and gains a perspective of consciousness from the outside, revealing a no-self. This is similar to what we call lucidity, which is elevated awareness during which the dreamer is aware of the dreaming 
in a dream, this is akin to meta-awareness, because the vantage point of the elevated awareness is seen not to be situated in the dream character, the former assumed identity of the self. Therefore, the dream itself, which includes the character, is considered as a framework, while that which is doing the considering of the framework is the true empty self, or the no-self. This is why it is often said in wisdom that life is a dream. Life is an illusion, a matrix of the mind. And also why we often hear the grasshoppers say in response, Yeah, well, whether it's illusion or not, it doesn't matter. It won't change the way I receive my experience, or the fact that I'm a creature with mundane needs. So whether it's real or not doesn't make a difference existentially. An understandable assertion, unto which I say, you are overthinking it. And you could stand to benefit from getting some space between your true self and the thinking mind. Which is really just a spoiled, immature, over-demanding brat. That, if allowed, will vacuum all the energy and power away from the true self. With its constant excessive need for attention, high maintenance, and pampering upkeep. That's why it seems to the thinking mind like there would be no difference existentially whether you approached life with the truth or in delusion. It's all the same same, no? Actually, you wouldn't know that. This belief is the result of approaching the prospect of meta-awareness with an externalization mindset. It still lacks the first-hand understanding that we are not the ego. This is like a dream character saying that it knows lucidity because it understands the concept of it intellectually. It would also be like saying there's no difference between the operating systems of instinct and self-consciousness. Of course there is a difference, but that difference is not going to be fully appreciated from the myopic perspective. So much of the ego's difficulty in realizing the truth is due to the attention's stubborn attachment to the identity as an ego. This is why the ego can't understand how delusion and the truth are any different existentially. Most of everything will change contextually, which will ultimately mean a shift in the whole basic approach. So shrugging off enlightenment due to an intellectual idea that it won't matter existentially is not only erroneous, but a serious dereliction of responsibility. This is something one should approach again. That is, if they are truly interested in enlightenment and are not just looking to play little games with the intellect. Ultimately, meta-awareness can be said to be the state of consciousness post-enlightenment. Now, does that mean divinity? No. Does this mean reaching a heavenly dimension? No. Enlightenment isn't a place or an ideal embodiment. Enlightenment isn't about transforming your ego or coming to be the right kind of ego. Enlightenment is the liberation from identifications with places and embodiments. When one has realized they are neither a place nor an embodiment. Enlightenment doesn't happen to a person. Enlightenment is always from the person. So it's not about attaining anything that is lacking from your person. 
It's about coming to understand that you are not a person. Understanding this, it becomes clear that the aim isn't to change illusion, but only to put the illusion in its proper context, and not to become deluded by it. Kind of like what the old Zen proverb alludes. Before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. In other words, after enlightenment, all will be the same. Except you will no longer be in ignorance.